Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to part two of my Q&A series. So in part one, I covered all of your questions regarding my personal background, YouTube, and finances. And in this video, as I promised, I will be covering your questions on luxury and shopping. So this hopefully will be a bit more exciting to watch. The last video, I painted my nails so that you had something to look at while I answered your questions. And this time, I've got some eye candy for you. I've just sort of sprinkled them around. Uh, it's kind of hard to get everything in camera shot because I'm a little bit close I'm sitting very closely so that you can see uh, the details but hopefully as I go through your questions I can show you each a little bit more up close so let's just jump right into it the very first question is what is your favorite brand and as you can see <laughs> the vast majority of my collection and I don't have a huge collection but proportionally I will say that Chanel takes over a good chunk of my collection so Chanel uh, I do love the story of Gabrielle Chanel. I love her, um, you know, the story of her background, the orphanage, and how she came to be this iconic sort of powerful woman in her time. I also love the classic and really timeless designs that they put out, so I'm going to have to say Chanel. Do you accessorize your bags? No, I don't. No charms, no twillies, nothing like that. I like things very simple and clean and really unembellished. I do think that charms and twillies look super cute on other people, but it's just not my aesthetic. What is the bag you will never buy no matter the hype? I will never buy the Neverfull. <laughs> So the name is really appropriate for me. Um, I understand that it is a workhorse tote for a lot of people, but I'm not a tote gal and the Neverfull has just never ever called to me, so it's never gonna be in my collection. What is a bag or luxury item that you regret not buying? Um, well, I did buy it and then I had to return it, so it's the Chanel Mini Square in Caviar. I know they're no longer offered in the boutiques and that's why I always say that this is the bag that got away from me. Long story short, I purchased a beautiful 18B raspberry pink caviar mini square from Fashion File and when I received it, I noticed something, I had to return it. So it was in my hands for like 48 hours, it was so cute, and it went back. Um, I do wish that I had purchased the mini square in caviar when they were still available in the boutiques. I'm not interested in paying over retail for a pre-loved one now. I know many of you have been really kind about sending me links anytime you see one on the market. Um, I'm just, for me, I think I'm just going to let it go at this point unless Chanel decides to bring it back. Do you have a handbag wish list or are you currently at peace with your collection? I am very much at peace at the moment. Do you think purse piece is real? Yes, of course. I do believe that purse peace is real. I think that being at peace is a uh, conscious decision. You know, it's a decision to be grateful for what you already have. And that's how I feel about my handbag collection at the moment. But peace is not permanent. Like any kind of peace I don't think is permanent. You have to kind of stay in that conscious state. And saying that I'm at purse piece doesn't mean that I'll never ever add another handbag to my collection again. I have gotten a couple of comments here and there saying like, oh, I thought you were reaching purse piece. Why'd you get another one? Well, it's kind of like a job. If you are happy at your job, you're content at your job, you feel pretty satisfied, you're not actively looking to make a switch, you're not actively interviewing for a new job, but if some amazing opportunity comes across that you weren't even looking for, and it just seems like it was meant for you, you're probably gonna take that new opportunity, right? So that's kind of how I feel about my bags. Like, I'm very happy with my bags. I don't have a wish list. Um, there's nothing really that I'm looking to buy at the moment. I'm very content. However, if something catches my eye and it speaks to me, then yeah, I might add it or I might swap it out with something else that's not making me as excited, you know, kind of like the one in one out approach that I mentioned in some earlier videos. So yeah, um, let's see. Let me talk about this one here because I think I had said I was reaching purse piece and then I bought this beautiful, beautiful mermaid rainbow Chanel reissue wallet on chain. And some of you were like, hmm, number one, I always said I wanted a pop of color. So I finally got this beautiful pop of colors. And um, 
while I was feeling purse peace when I bought this, I kind of felt like this was the cherry on top. You know what I mean? And you guys know I've also sold off a couple of bags recently. So you're probably noticing in my Chanel lineup there is something missing. Yes. So I sold the burgundy clutch with chain that was in the lambskin and the gold hardware. It was basically the sister of this bag. And I'm really happy because the person who bought it is a subby. She's also a follower on my IG. And she said that burgundy is absolutely her favorite color of all time. And she's got another burgundy bag that she showed me. She sent me a photo. And so those two burgundy sisters will be together. So I was really happy to let her go and you know, have, have her go to a place that she'll be enjoyed and appreciated and used. Okay, how often are you buying luxury goods? I have no idea. I, I really don't keep track. Um, for me, it's really about quality over quantity. I'm never going to be the kind of person that has 50, 60, 70, 100 plus bags in my collection. I think that would give me a headache having too much stuff like that. But clearly, I like them enough that I have more than I need, um, but I don't keep track. I am dramatically slowing down um, with my handbag shopping though. Do you think your handbag collection has increased more rapidly since you've started vlogging? Definitely. Uh, I do think there's this excitement within the YouTube community and it's, it's really contagious, right? Like every time someone unboxes something or reveals something new, it's just there's this sort of like joy and excitement related to that that I think kind of spreads. And the fact that I now have you all to share my goodies with and share my passion with, it makes me kind of, not that I, it makes me want to buy more, but it makes me more comfortable with my shopping because I have a community to share it with. It's just more fun. Whereas before, I really wouldn't have anyone in my life that I could share this with. In fact, I would probably hide it or just... You know, I'd be too timid to talk about it. Also, the time in my life. So I did kind of mention this in my part one Q&A. But I was very, very strict and disciplined with myself for many, many years in terms of like financial management, saving, investing, etc. To the point where I think that I was, I've got, I had gone too far to that side of things and I wasn't really enjoying life. I wasn't taking things lightly. It was just too serious. Even my husband was commenting that I need to just, you know, chill out. So I finally have given my per myself permission to enjoy and indulge. And I talked about this in the last video. So even if I hadn't started my YouTube channel, I think that I would have seen a spike in my indulgement, <laughs> if you will but perhaps not as accelerated as if, you know, after joining this YouTube community. So I have to be honest with myself. I do think that it, it did accelerate. Um, what are your tips for first time luxury buyers? Um, I would say know your personal aesthetic. Don't get caught up in trends. Don't buy on debt. I really don't think that any handbag or any luxury item is worth going into debt for. Your financial freedom is definitely much more important. Don't ever compromise on quality. I have been accused of being way too picky. Um, I've gotten some comments here and that's okay. I am fine to be known as the picky girl. I am pretty picky, not just about my purchases, but pretty much everything in my life. That's just who I am. I, I'm not going to hide that part of myself. But I know that if I purchase a handbag and there's something wrong with the quality or something doesn't feel right to me, I'm never going to be able to overlook that. And why as a customer should we compromise when it's our hard earned money? If you're not happy with something for whatever the reason, even if it's something really small, return it and get something that you're really happy with. And then I guess the other tip I would say is try to find a really good sales associate from whatever brand that you tend to shop from. Um, someone who will not pressure you, who will not lie to you and tell you that something looks great when it doesn't or tell you that something is your style when it's clearly not. Like someone who's just really honest, respectful, is patient with you as you, you know, make your choices. Um, I think that makes a big, big difference in the shopping experience. Do you buy bags with an investor mindset or do you buy them just because you like it? Definitely because I like them, bags 
I believe are meant to be used and enjoyed. I don't see them as investments. In fact, I did a video a while back talking about whether or not the Chanel classic flap is really a good investment or not. Here's my, I have to show you some eye candy. Otherwise you're just going to get bored of my voice. So here's my vintage lambskin classic flap, 20 years old. Oh, there's my, oh, now you see how you, I store my, so I put the little Chanel buffing cloth here because I don't like the zipper pull indenting and the chains as well. Um, but a lot of people say, oh, this is such a good investment. It is within the handbag world. It holds its value really well. Their prices have been skyrocketing over the last several decades. So yes, in that sense, but is it a good investment among other investments like the stock market or real estate or some kind of business? I I would argue probably not, but you can go check that video out if you're interested. Okay, let me put this baby down. Uh, bags that you regret buying. Uh, I don't have, obviously, because I regretted it, I got rid of it. I don't have to show you, but my very, very first Chanel bag was about, probably about 12 or 13 years ago. It was the white, yes, I did white, Chanel Rodeo Drive Hobo Bag. Hobo is not my style, so I don't know why I did that. With really bright yellow gold hardware, which was stunning and gorgeous, but again, not my style. As you can see, I have a lot of silver and more muted, like champagne gold, light gold. Um, I regret that because I, I think I bought into the hype of like what Chanel is supposed to feel like. It looks so luxurious and high end and I didn't stop to think like, hmm, where, when and where will I ever wear this? And how does this go with my wardrobe? And it's white. Like I was petrified to wear it. So over a period of about a decade, I think I only wore her out once or twice. And then last year, you guys may remember, I sold the bag to Fashion File for a pretty significant loss. It did not hold its value, even though it was in really good condition. I think I lost like half of my money, not even calculating for inflation. <laughs> So I do wish that I had purchased the classic flap at that time instead. Does your husband have similar taste in luxury items? <laughs> no way. No. He's a total guy's guy. He's not into brands or anything like that. Um, the nicest thing that he owns is a Rolex that my parents gifted to him when we got married. There is a pretty funny video of my husband ranking my bags and saying some pretty hideous remarks about my beloved bags. Uh, I'll insert that somewhere if you want to go take a look if you missed that. Okay, next question. If you had to get rid of your entire handbag collection, what's the one bag you would keep? Oh, man. I don't like this question. Okay, so let me just, I know you can't see all of the stuff sitting out here, and these aren't all my bags. There's like some poking over here too, but I don't have, like you guys know, I have a pretty tight collection. Still plenty, like more than enough. Here. I could probably do without at least half of these, but um, they all, like they all serve a purpose, and they all go well with my outfits, and they really make me happy, so that's why I'm keeping them. So let me see here, if I had to get rid of all of them, I will say the one that's making me smile the most these days, is this is um, the rainbow reissue. I have not worn her out yet though, and I'm going to very soon. I had a moment where I thought maybe the chain was not the right length for me, and I was a little bit fussy about that, but I tried it again recently, and I think I'm fine with her. So this is the one that's making me the happiest, but if I had to choose only one bag to keep, from a practicality standpoint, this might shock you guys, but it's probably not going to be a Chanel. It would probably be my Louis Vuitton Pochette Matisse. You guys know the whole story on this bag. I love, love, love my Pochette Matisse. Because from a design standpoint, it is the perfect bag for me. It's got the top handle. It's got the removable strap. You can wear it crossbody or one shoulder. The versatility is everything. And then you guys know I'm really, really, really big on compartments. And look at this beautiful microfiber. It's just so well constructed. Here's the strap. So it's got the compartments, which I love for the organization. You know, I also love flap bags. That is my preferred design. The back pocket makes a huge difference for your phone. So if I could only keep one bag, 
it'd probably be the Pochette Matisse. However, if it was the only bag that I could keep in my collection, I would probably get the Empreinte leather version, probably the black Empreinte, because then it could go with anything. And that would, yeah, I'd probably do that because sometimes I'm not in the mood to wear monogram. I feel like it could be a little bit loud in certain places. So that's my answer. Push up Matisse, but in the black Empreinte. Wow, I can't believe I was able to answer that. Okay, um, if I wanted to purchase a Chanel lambskin bag, which colors should I stick with? Which ones will age better? Um, I think that the darker colors age better. Here it is again. I'll also show you the white vintage one that I have that I can't believe still that I won. So let me show you. So here this is pre-spa treatment. I had mentioned when I unboxed her that I was definitely going to send her out to the leather surgeons and get her all spiffed up and taken care of, but I just haven't had a chance to do that yet. This is a pretty old vintage. It's a three series. But just as an example, with the lighter colors, now this is white, and it is lambskin, you can see all of the scuffs and stains and scratches and some wrinkling as well. Now I do think that after she comes back from the leather surgeons, she's gonna look amazing, but let me show you the corners, there's some yellowing as well, and then, so I do think that darker colors are safer. You also don't have to worry about like color transfer, but my real answer is, buy the color that you absolutely love buy the one that's going to make you happy because if you fuss and worry about which one's going to age better and that's going to prevent you from getting the bag you really love i think that's kind of a shame and by the way all the, ba the every single bag is going to age <laughs> like even my black one you can see it's aged in a different way there's no staining that you can see but the quilts have flattened out the leather is a little bit aged you know they all age Okay, when you're ready to buy a colored bag, which color do you think you'd gravitate towards? Oh, girl, I already did. <laughs> this is it. It's not even a color. It's like a multitude of colors. Remember I bought my Celine small size Trator bag? It was in the beautiful berry color. I got that, kept it brand new, hadn't worn it yet, then discovered this very soon after and was like, okay, I can't keep both. I don't want to keep both. This was a no-brainer for me. And then I sold my Celine Trator to one of my subbies. Okay. Do you also buy luxury clothes and shoes? Uh, yes and no. I do buy a few key like statement pieces for my wardrobe. For example, everyone needs a little black dress, right? That makes them feel like a million bucks. And mine is from Badgley Mishka. I had it, I've had it for years, but it fits like a glove. It makes me feel amazing. I always get so many compliments on it. It is a very simple but very chic black dress. I also have a coat from Max Mara that I adore. Um, I recently added a Burberry trench that I really am happy with. But I don't buy clothes that have like name brands splashed on them like Gucci or like the Gucci t-shirts and sweatshirts. That's not my style. Um, I don't buy clothes from Louis Vuitton. It's really not my aesthetic. They're pretty bold and loud. I would love to have a Chanel tweed jacket one day, but I'm not into like the Chanel um, sweaters that literally say Chanel on the front of them. Again, just not my aesthetic. And then in terms of shoes, I used to buy luxury shoes, but I found them to be supremely uncomfortable. So I had the Gucci A sneakers. I returned those right away. They were too flat and hard. I've had Prada sneakers. My mom took them from me because she says they're comfortable. They're just not comfortable for me. Um, I don't wear heels a lot, so I, I don't invest in like expensive high heels. For me right now, the best sneakers that I have found are the Cole Haan Grand Pro tennis sneakers. I'm literally like onto my 10th pair. They're my favorites and they're light and comfy and they have enough support. You guys know if you watched my last Q&A part one, I walk a lot. So I do need really, really comfortable shoes and sneakers. If you have any recommendations for me, if you know of any really cute designer shoe, uh, sneakers in particular that are comfortable, especially for someone who has like a high arch, please comment down below. Let me know because um, I'd be interested. 
Do you think that Louis Vuitton is becoming a cheapened brand? No. I mean, I think they need to do a better job of quality control, but the same goes for Chanel and other brands too. I think if anything, the knockoffs, yeah, the knockoffs are making Louis Vuitton seem like pretty cheap. If you see like a lot of knockoffs on the streets. Um, but the brand itself is still very much luxury in my mind. Like look at the Speedy. By the way, I have not worn my Speedy out yet, but you guys know how happy my, my, uh, my 10 year old, my daughter was when she saw this, she calls this the mailbox bag because it's shaped like a mailbox so look at this this is so classic i never thought i would own a speedy but it was after seeing seeing a series of photos um old photos of audrey hepburn and her speedy 25 so this is the 25 size it's the classic without the bandolier i don't know when i look at this i think of like louis vuitton's craftsmanship and heritage and history and all of that i do not think that they've become a cheapened brand um I just think that, like I said, they absolutely need to do a better job of quality control. And the same goes for Chanel and a couple of other brands probably. Okay, moving on. Do you like Polen bags? Um, Polen, for those of you who are not familiar, is a Parisian brand. They make really like pretty and feminine handbags. They kind of look like backpack backpack style to me at least some of their shoulder bags look like little mini backpacks they're super cute just not my aesthetic but I could see why people are drawn to them what is your holy grail bag oh my gosh the term holy grail mm, to me it feels a little funny for a handbag because I could do without any of these like literally if I had to sell all of, the, all of these tomorrow I wouldn't be happy about it but I would do it um, but if I had to choose one and give one bag that sort of label, it would be my Chanel Jumbo. This is my Jumbo in the black caviar with the flat CC, which I love, silver hardware. It's the single flap, which I absolutely love, especially because you have the grommets side by side and you can easily pull the strap in and out versus the double flap where the grommets are front to back and it's much lighter because it doesn't have the double flap so it's stuffed with some bubble paper at the moment and the reason why I'm gonna say the jumbo as my answer is because this bag signifies like a coming of age for me almost like coming full circle because I had mentioned a while back that I wanted this bag in my early 20s I could have bought it probably, it wouldn't have been the most responsible thing to do, but I was working and I could have bought it, but I didn't. I had the willpower. <laughs> I think I, you know, I really did have the willpower and the discipline to leave it at the store, even though I tried it on and was obsessed and drooling um, because I had other priorities. I had to get my finances in order. I had to get out of student loan debt and pay off our mortgage and just prepare for our future so I didn't and now fast forward a little shy of 20 years later I feel like I finally have this bag and it feels more gratifying because I know I've earned it so yeah I would say the jumbo would be my answer so now the bags are all kind of tipping over making this sort of weird domino effect let me just I know you didn't ask about this but I have to just show you because this is the best tweed I feel that Chanel has ever, ever, ever made, at least to my eyes. And you guys know I bought this on my birthday. It's the large O case. Look up close. It has all this intricate detailing with the Chanel ribbon and it has the light gold hardware. So simple. I know that this is a small leather good item, but I absolutely am not using this as a pouch. I'm using this as a clutch for fall winter against some you know nice wrap coats so yeah this is like I love this piece oh, I'll just plop her over here for now so let's see next question what's your number one favorite bag among all of your collection and why I just want to know the most valuable bag that you have Ooh, I don't really have a favorite I like to rotate my bags you guys know I'm really a big fan of trying to like curate a collection, a really tight collection that's well-rounded. The most valuable bag, I know it's kind of like a sentimental answer, but the most valuable bag to me would be the one that my son knitted for me. Yes, because it's one of a kind. He made it with love. Let me see if I can grab it. Oh, 
Okay, like how cute is this? My son knitted this little pouch bag for me probably um, when he was about six and a half years old. And he put these little clips on it to get the strap on. I just think it's so, so cute. I will always keep this bag. I mean, yeah, this just, so I know it's not one of these luxury handbags, but since the question said, what is the most valuable to you? I had to show that one. That's definitely the most valuable bag that I have. What's the maximum number of bags you would own in your collection? Oh, I definitely think I've reached my max. Um, probably between like 12 to 15. I always said like about a dozen seems like a good sweet spot for me. Um, it depends on whether or not you count my SLGs as bags. So for example, if I remove this, which is an SLG, if I remove all of my walks, Here's my filigree, which I recently added, which I absolutely love. These are all SLGs, believe it or not. They're expensive SLGs, but I count them as bags personally because I only wear them as bags. I don't wear them as wallets. But if you're only counting bags, just trying to make sense of this pile here. I've got my Celine. I've got my cute puffy little toy Lulu. Yeah, I definitely can't fit everything in the camera shot, but here's my Celine classic box, my Givenchy Anticona. Um, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine. Ten, I guess I have to count, even though I didn't buy this, even though this was a giveaway that I won. But um, yeah, I feel like it's, here, you can't see the jumbo. I feel like a dozen is the right number for me. And then if I, like I said before, if I add, I might do kind of a swap where it's that one in, one out approach. I've been doing that with my clothes and my shoes for the past several years, that one in, one out. And I did mention a while back that there was a full year where I bought absolutely no clothes so that I could really tighten and curate. And I feel like that's made my life so much easier, especially in the morning when I get dressed because I don't have like clothes spilling out of my closet. It's actually pretty minimal and it's just easier to mix and match that way. How often do you switch your bags? Uh, I do rotate them very regularly, so I would say maybe every one to two days. What Hermes bag is on your wish list? Well, I was just at Hermes with my friend. I don't know if I mentioned that on my IG recently. I tried on the Mini Evelyn. So cute, so light, so comfortable. Leather is so soft. I was, um, I was given the opportunity to purchase a couple of different colors. I tried on the black, the midnight navy, and then my friend tried on a beautiful like tomato red, and then also this sort of dark gray. She wound up buying the dark gray. I was, I was tempted to get one myself as well, but none of the colors were really speaking to me. And as you can see, I have a lot of black and I'm trying desperately to stay away. I love camel. They have a color called gold. So I put my name on the wait list for that. So if I get a phone call for that, I'm going to seriously consider adding that one um but i don't have like the birkin or the kelly on my wish list if someone were to gift me a free <laughs> hermes bag i would choose the kelly either the 25 or the 28 in the um epsom leather but i'm really not a birkin girl because i don't like handheld or tote style um yeah and then would you invest in hermes if you mean invest in an hermes handbag Right now, other than the Mini Eveline, which is quite affordable from the Hermes collection, uh, probably not. I'm definitely not going to buy a Birkin or a Kelly for myself. If you mean invest in Hermes stock, probably not there either. I am an investor in LVMH, who um, LVMH is the parent company for Louis Vuitton. So if you're interested in that, I'll insert a video here. Next question, I have a Chanel wallet on chain, which I bought with my dear friend, so it has a great memory associated with it. However, since my, my friend passed away, I found myself not reaching for the bag to use anymore. Should I sell it or embrace it? What would you do? First of all, I'm really sorry for your loss. That is, 
you know, that's unfortunate that you lost your friend. I personally believe that the memories you have with your friend live in your heart, not in a bag, right? So if you feel ready to let it go, then I see no reason why you shouldn't. It sounds like the value of the bag is really not the bag itself, but the memories associated with it. So I think whether you have the bag or not, you'll have the memories forever. So it's totally up to you. Okay, guys, I'm so sorry about that. I had to quickly just grab a few things and run to the other room because our neighbor has vacated their apartment and so there's massive construction happening to sort of renew and refresh the paint and the tiles and all that. So it got really noisy. So now I'm in a new spot and I wasn't able to grab everything. But let me just finish a few of the remaining questions here. Um, if you had to pick one designer bag to do a collaboration with, who would it be? It would probably be Louis Vuitton because I do think that in the past they've done some amazing designer collaborations and it's always like really fun. If you could only buy one luxury brand for your entire life, which brand would you choose? I think that's pretty obvious from my first um, question. It would be Chanel. How and when did your luxury journey start? Which item started it? Okay. Oh, I actually brought that one. Okay, good. So let me just actually they're kind of so funny this is kind of similar so this is my very first oh my gosh it's so like so this was my very first luxury handbag when I was probably about 19 years old very fond memories associated with this with my mom so I think I was like a freshman in college it's pretty beat up you can see but I kept it for sentimental reasons. I'm not the most sentimental person. I usually discard things pretty quickly because I don't like clutter. But this one, because like I said, it has really nice memories associated with it. I've kept it, but look at the corners. Now I wore this thing to death, to death. I like abused it. I wore it almost every day all throughout college. So it definitely got uh, money's worth out of it. But this was the first piece that started it all. Okay. What factors do you weigh when deciding on a handbag? Oh, gosh. Obviously, style. Uh, you know, like, does it go with my personal aesthetic? Also, comfort is a big factor, like the weight. I can't do heavy bags. I do have a video where I weigh some of my handbags and another video where I talk about my handbag deal breakers, so I will insert them both. And definitely quality. Like, I don't want something to fall apart quickly on me especially if I love it so much I want it to be well made which is why probably some of you think that I'm really really picky but I do inspect my bags when I bring them home to make sure that there's no like loose stitch or anything wonky going on and also I do try to think about which handbag would round out my existing collection because like I said I'm really trying to like curate what I have why do you prefer made in France pieces over others? Is it because Louis Vuitton is a French house or because of quality issues from other countries? Uh, you just answered my question both. Yes, yes, and yes. Um, I prefer made in France pieces because Louis Vuitton and Chanel are French houses. So I love the heritage that comes out of there and the long standing training that comes out of there for the craftsmanship. And also, yes, for. Both Chanel and Louis Vuitton, I have seen quality issues. For Louis Vuitton in particular, made in USA pieces have never worked out for me and I've always had to return them. Now I know that there are plenty of made in USA pieces out there that are well made and have lasted for years and some of you own them. But for me personally, I do prefer made in France. I have found that made in Spain pieces from Louis Vuitton are also really nice. So I've kind of become a believer in the Spain pieces recently as well as my toiletry 19 and my toiletry 26 are made in Spain here I have this one so here's my 26 and if you can see made in Spain okay I'm so happy I grabbed all the pieces that I needed <laughs> okay what is your personal clothing style I think you can get a sense of my personal style on IG as I do post like mod shots and outfit shots from time to time. I would probably describe my style as simple, a little bit more understated, although sometimes I can come outside the box a bit, um, but mostly a lot of neutrals. I have a question regarding storage. I folded my Speedy, placed it in its dust bag. 
and put it back in its box. Is that okay, or would you suggest I stuff it to keep the shape and then place it in the dust bag? Is it just a matter of preference, or I'm scared of the Damier bin canvas creasing and peeling? Oh my gosh. Okay, girl. Okay. So let me show you. This is where I think Louis Vuitton did us a huge disservice by shoving poor speedies into small boxes. You know they have boxes large enough to properly place the speedies without smushing them. Like, why do they have to be flat? It's just so traumatizing. So here's my speedy. Here it is, stuffed. Yes, I absolutely stuff it because you get the crease lines here and you want them to come out, you know? You want them to eventually work its way out. If you constantly fold it and place it in a box, folded like that for long periods of time, it, the, the creasing is just going to be more emphasized. And I do think the bags need to breathe, so in general, I never store my bags in the boxes. I always just put them in the dust bag so it's more breathable and I always definitely stuff them. Also on the Speedy in particular, I know some of you hang your lock here, which is fine. I think it looks cute like that. I'm not going to do that myself. The lock is actually in this little pocket here because I have seen older Speedies where this either rips completely because of the weight of the lock or the rust from the lock totally discolors the Vachetta leather or it just is like droopy so the tab is like down to it's kind of like when you have heavy earrings if you have pierced ears and it makes your earlobes totally droop down so i don't put the lock there either but no girl please take take the speedy out stuff it put it in its dust bag and have it standing upright like this so that it can breathe and not be all creased and folded like that. I'm a huge fan of Marie Kondo. For those of you who are not familiar, Marie Kondo is this cute little Japanese woman who has sort of like sensationalized minimalism and decluttering. And she has a very particular way of folding and storing items. And I follow her pretty much to a T when it comes to my drawers and my closet. So you can kind of get a sense of where this is coming from. Do you sell your bags away when your husband says it's not looking good on you? Or no way, you'll keep it because you love it. Um, no way. <laughs> my husband actually, like I said, ranked my handbags, so I'll insert that video. He said some pretty cruel things about my beloved handbags, and I still love them. I still have them. He knows I would never get rid of something just because he doesn't like it, because I buy these things for me, not for anyone else, not for him. Um, if we're going out on a date night and I'm trying to look good for him, I'm not going to grab the bag that he thinks is hideous, obviously, but for the most part, these bags are for me. So no, I will keep them. And then, um, there was a question about my key pouch. So she asks, do you, do you use your key pouch for keys? <laughs> yes. My Louis Vuitton key pouch. This is my Louis Vuitton key pouch with the Damier Abin print. Yes. I don't have a car. You would know that if you watch my part one. So I don't have a huge, like, bulky key fob for my car. So just the few keys that I have. And then sometimes I can put some cards or receipts or coins in here. Um, she says here that sometimes her key pouch is smushy. I don't know what that means. Like, it's pliable, which I like. But, yeah, I definitely use this for my keys. And this is the, this is the one SLG that comes with me literally everywhere, every day. Because I always have to have my keys, right? So this is well worth I, I used to think this was like such an overhyped piece that didn't make any sense like why do you need a pouch for your keys i get it though especially if you have lambskin bags or bags with lambskin interiors you don't want your keys to scratch them up i used to just use like a really cheap um like microfiber pouch that i got with um, a j crew purchase which worked fine i used that for a while until it got kind of grungy but this definitely now that i've used it for a while i do think it's worth it Okay, next question. Do you think that the Chanel card holder is worth it? It is about the same price as the toiletry pouch 26 from Louis Vuitton. Okay, so in my mind, you can't really compare these two. This is a huge pouch that you can use as a toiletry case or as even like um, a casual clutch, which I do as well. This one here is my really old 
either vintage or nearly vintage Chanel card holder that my husband got for me when we were dating. You can see here this thing is about 20 years old and it has held up beautifully. Some people cannot believe how old it is. So in terms of Chanel card holders and their quality, I do think that it's worth the money, especially if you need a card holder, if you're not a wallet person, if you like slim, light card holders. These two cannot be compared. I know that the prices are similar, but they serve very, very different purposes. You can't use this as a clutch or a pouch, and you can't use this as a card holder. So if you need a card holder, yeah, I do think it's worth it. Okay, let's see. We're getting on to, I think this is the last question. Let me just check. Yeah, okay, last question, guys. If you're still with me, please comment down below that you're still with me. Um, do you have any bags that you've sold, regretted, and now want to repurchase? No, I don't. If you think that I'm picky about my purchases, I'm actually much pickier about deciding which ones to let go because I know that once I let it go, that's it. Like I'm, I'm not getting it back. Whereas when I buy something, I could take my time. So I'm much pickier about deciding that. So when I do decide to let something go, I know I'm 100% ready. There are never any regrets. Like the last few bags that I sold recently, people sent me like crying emojis and sad emojis. And I was like, oh, no, it's okay. I'm fine. I'm really, I'm really actually happy for the new owner. Um, it's very liberating for me to let go of things because I do love to declutter and I'm always just really excited for the person who purchased the item from me and I like the feeling of knowing that you know the item will be much more appreciated and enjoyed rather than just sitting in my closet being ignored so hopefully I covered all of the questions that you sent in I think I did cover all of them but if I missed something please let me know in the comments below I'm sorry about this like last minute shift and the condensed eye candy here but I didn't want you to hear all the banging from the construction next door. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you have any other questions or if you need me to clarify or elaborate further on any of the questions that I touched on, please let me know in the comments below. I do hope you enjoyed this. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I would love for you to do so. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.